Artificial intelligence is today a buzzword. People talk about it as if it's the greatest thing that humanity has seen since sliced bread. And everyone claims to be an expert in this field. Everyone's trying to advise someone on using artificial intelligence. Everyone's trying to talk about either the doom and gloom scenario when it comes to AI and its impact on humanity or the glittery focus on artificial intelligence changing the world and being the silver bullet that's going to solve all our issues. Being in the role for six years, um, I must tell you it's none of, of any of this, but it has some aspects that are true. It will be the solution to some problems. It will exacerbate others. Some governments are going to benefit from it. Others are going to suffer because of it. And this is the world that we live in. Throughout history, we've seen these tools become tools that are used for good and weapons that are used against the populace, unfortunately, at times. And our role in the UAE was for this specific revolution, rather than being reactive, to try to become proactive. Now, what have we done in the last six years? There's a question that I kept, I kept getting asked many, many times across different platforms. And the answer was, the first year that I came into office, I wanted to understand what it meant to be a government that is focusing on artificial intelligence. The first thing we did was we said, let's put the infrastructure. So we've invested in compute, we invested in building talent in the UAE. I'll give you a few examples of things that we did and, and you know, the outcomes of them. The first thing we did was we said, if we want to combat the negative ramifications of using AI, we need to ensure that there is no ignorance within the decision-making process. You guys are talking about infrastructure, you're talking about production, you're talking about AI and its use in certain verticals. If you take a decision to deploy or use or not use artificial intelligence that is driven by ignorance, I can guarantee that you guys are going to be harmed, whether you are from an entity or a consultancy or a government, wherever you may be. If you do not know what that decision is going to entail, what this technology is capable of, and what are the negative and positive ramifications, you are going to lose out because you're using this technology or not using it. So the first year that um, I came into office, we worked on deploying a program with the University of Oxford, where we took senior government officials at the level of executive director and above, and we took them through a one-year course with the University of Oxford where they had to understand what AI ethics are, how to read the code, how to actually build AI systems for purpose, what are good and bad um, use cases of artificial intelligence. And for them to graduate, they need to come and present a project in front of a judging panel of experts from the University of Oxford and be scrutinized until they either pass or fail. Today, we have 420 officials across the UAE government, the, the federal government, that are our AI army. They are the experts, the advisors, the people that ministers consult with, the people that the leadership consults with to deploy and to work on AI. And that's why you see that the UAE is, you know, constantly rising up the ranks when it comes to artificial intelligence and its use and its deployment as well. The other thing we said was, we need to ensure that we have research happening in the UAE that is world class. We launched a university that was the first university in the world focused specifically on AI, called the Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence. And that university just focuses on AI, postgraduate uh, degrees, and looks at teaching people how to apply AI, not just doing the research side, but researching it and then applying it in real life scenarios. And there's a specific reason why we wanted to do that, because we believe that this revolution is going to reshape the world we're living in, and we are perfectly suited to lead in that domain. Why are we perfectly suited to lead in that domain? To answer that question, I'll quickly go back in history to give you a snippet of how we think here. We, we tend to look at history to try to project the future. That's how we operate as a populace. And we've learned a lot of lessons in the past. Between the year 813 till the year 1515, the Middle East used to be the center of science, technology, innovation, economy, culture of the world. In that time period, Europe was going through the Dark Ages, we were going through the Golden Ages. And one question that we constantly ask ourselves, if that was the case, why are we today in the Dark Ages and Europe is in the Golden Ages or the West? What happened at that pivotal point in history that shaped our lives? And the answer, if you want to look at something that carries the most weight when, when you think of this question, 
is technology. In the year 1455, there was a technology that was invented that would proliferate knowledge, that would democratize access to it, that would change the world. And that technology was the Gutenberg printing press. It was embraced by every single civilization on Earth, except the Arab Muslim civilization that banned it for 200 years. So our forefathers believed that this technology will be a negative one, and they banned it for 400 years. The Europeans said we need to embrace it fully. And that one decision reshaped a region and completely catapulted another one to make it lead the world. Why did our region ban the printing press? Is the question that we asked. There were three reasons. The first was the religious clerks came and said people are going to spread fake versions of the Quran. Misinformation and disinformation. Exactly the same way that people are looking at artificial intelligence today. The second was the calligraphers came to the sultan at the time and said, we're going to lose our jobs. You need to protect us. So job loss, right? <laughs> and the third is the advisors came to the leadership as well. And they said, we don't know what this technology is going to do. So instead of jumping at it, let's take the back seat, allow someone else to use it, and then decide if we want to use this technology or not. Exactly what's happening with AI. We are at a juncture in history, the same one that we as a region were in 600 years ago. And I think we do not want to make that mistake again. The UAE is a country that is doubling down on AI, not because we are blinded by the glitter and the promise of AI. We know that there are challenges ahead. But we are not going to be pulled back by those who are going to say that this technology is just going to be a negative one. Another important fact that I want to mention is we do not want to be exporters of the technology. So since 2022, we started working on our own large language models. We believe in having LLM sovereignty, as you want to call it. We want to ensure that we are a net, net exporter of this technology. And if you see the rankings, depending on the days or the weeks or the months, the UAE either has the most used open source LLM in the world or within the top three. So Falcon was to the top uh, six months ago. I think now it's the second most used open source large language model in the world. And we are constantly working on innovating and ensuring that we can be at the cutting edge. Every country can reach the promise of the technology. But what it needs to do is build the infrastructure, not be taken aback by the naysayers, and ensure that you can actually improve the quality of life of people by using this technology. I want to conclude by saying the first, our motto for deploying AI in the UAE is BRAIN. It's an acronym that is Building a Responsible Artificial Intelligence Nation. Responsible AI means deploying it in non-controversial means. Responsible AI means that it needs to serve the current generation and future generations in the same way. Responsible AI means that we actually need to know what this technology will do. And responsible AI means that we need to actually build some of it ourselves. And the second thing is, we are looking at working with the world to enable ourselves and enable the world with this technology. We have 200 nationalities in this country. We have people that have an extremely rich amount of data and capabilities that are being brought to the UAE to create AI engines that are global, uh, global from day one. It's not going to be easy. I'm sure that we'll have to constantly iterate and improve but if we embrace this mindset, whether we are a company, an individual, or a government, we'll be able to reshape the world. Thank you for having me.